and they notice just you know they catch on they they pay attention unlike the zetetics that it casts there's no you can see all the way to the bottom of the well and there's no there's no shadow in the way like an oblique shadow you know off the walls and so eratosthenes was like hey how come no one's been looking into this let's you know no pun intended so he hired that guy to pace out the linear distance uh, some of the next town north um, and and measured these angles and reported back. So you have to go north-south if, if you're talking about this equinox experiment here with the angles. Um, unless you have some model attendance that you'd like to um, clarify, like what, what your model, uh, if you have a model, I don't know. Um, what what is it what is it posit about um the sun's size and distance and all that i guess that's a whole nother can of worms but those have to be taken into consideration if this experiment is going to work because i know that you're just going to turn right around and say that the the sun is close and small so its rays are like highly divergent and um you're sticking two sticks in the ground and those sticks are parallel because the earth is flat and the angle of the shadow difference from one compared to the other is just due to the small, close, uh, magical hobbit sun that uh, has these diverging rays, like ex- extremely divergent rays. And so we, we kind of have, have to... Why are we making... Why are we making prejudicial comments about small hobbit suns? There's no reason to disparage anybody's position. Oh, it was not. I was joking. Stuff. It was just I was joking, man. Just chill out, man. I'm not trying to attack yeah. you. <laughs> I well, I, you know, I'm just I'm just making sure. I mean, you know, it's 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 it is it's an issue of not. It's it's almost like a, an ad hominem uh, attack. You're you're I'm not just, attacking look, me, so it's not an ad. No, no, mm-hmm. I understand. It, it's mm-hmm. the it's very simple. It's very simple. It's very logical. It's very commonsensical. Okay, if we have a light source that is directly over um, another point where there's no shadow and keep that on a north-south latitude, that's fine. Sure. And and you move that 500 miles up and put a stick in the ground, because you've moved away from the source of the light, you're going to get an angle that you wouldn't get directly under that light. That so is... Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. basic trigonometry so yeah again that assumes it's close and small because uh any 500 mile no, i i said nothing movement, no i said nothing about it being close and small yeah well for your um statement to actually make any sense whatsoever it has because you said you've moved away from the you just you literally said you moved away from the light source that's not true you the the sun is the the here's the earth right Sun's over here. You move from here to here, the same distance, right? So it's a triangle. Like your by the the perpendicular bisector of the the angle, the opening angle from the sun to the Earth um, would be directly in between these two uh, points that you're these two sticks that you're. So just go straight here. You're equally as far. It's an isosceles triangle. So both um, when you do the perpendicular bisector and you get two right triangles. Those hypotenuses are the exact same length. So, again, uh, okay, if you I understand to what you're more, saying. More, if you were to be more clear, then um, I think I, I wouldn't have had to um, sort of think about it more and try to explain more. And uh, so I, know, I'm, 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 I understand. I understand what you're okay. saying. Okay. Cool. So where, where yeah. does that so then it, it so then it would be based it would be based then upon the fact that the sun uh, does not is not required to be uh, 93 million miles away it would be a small and local sun um, no because no, then I'm, you have what I'm great saying divergence, you know well, but what I'm saying is is that even though I didn't use the term small and local but your point that you just made uh, helped me understand that that would be the inference uh, based on the description that I gave you. Yes, the small, the sun is small. It is local. It's not 93 million miles away. The light 
does not come at a perpendicular angle to the sun, to the, the Earth's surface. And so the angles of the light uh, rays are going to be divergent. Yes. Um, no, we know it's we know it's 90. That's a fact. We know it's 93 million miles away, um, roughly. And oh, you're just okay. saying right. that, you so, know, you just saying that you, you're just saying that you're like God and, you know, and we're all wrong and you don't. It's an assertion. No, again, that's, it's, a, again, it's an assertion again, that you don't have any evidence to support. <laughs> again, I didn't say that I was like God. So I don't think that well, that's yeah, a necessary you statement. You you're saying that every scientist who's ever lived, you're smarter than everyone who has ever lived or who has NASA, we have okay. uh, ESA, we have the Japanese, we have ad hominems, I'm not going to have a continuing conversation. Well, hang on one sec. Let me, let me clarify. These are not ad hominem. Ad hominem is a very specific fallacy. These are not ad hominem. Okay, these, he's, he's having pejoratives and, and maybe some invectives, but uh, that's not what an hominem means. If you're going to accuse me of a fallacy, then I will step in because that's what I do, and I will judge that fallacy. Well, he's not committing an at home fallacy, okay? All right. Well, an ad hominem fallacy. When, when, it, when if ad hom, an ad hominem fallacy is when somebody says, um, you're wrong because you're stupid. That would be an ad hominem because they're avoiding the issue and they're calling you a name, saying the reason you're wrong is because of something directed to you if they say you're wrong and give you all these different reasons and you're an idiot that's just an insult that's not at all mm -hmm. so um I, I, let's I, do yeah, this what would, what, hmm. okay let's do this let's do this let's, I, let's I would go to, like uh, to sure i'm sorry i'm sorry kyle i would just like you're to good. that the pejoratives not be made it, it's because what that does is that shows the prejudice it shows that it's, this is not a friendly conversation I have not said that I'm like God. I have not disparaged any scientists. I have not said that I'm smarter than anybody. I'm simply describing my observations and my interpretation of those things. Okay. okay. So, so agreed. Right. I'll um, I'll be more objective uh, if that's if that would be Let's better for everyone. So sure, sure. Let's do this then, since we're not going to agree on this experiment. Uh, and Dr. Kroon, you did say there were um, several different ways you could show curvature. Let's move to another one and see if we can't uh, come to a better understanding on um, a different experiment you can do to show that the Earth has curvature. Okay, sure. So I saw this uh, this picture recently uh, where it has three cargo ships. You, you may have seen it. And one's like three nautical miles away. One is seven and the other is nine. And they're all in the same frame. They're all there in reality at the same time at slightly different distances and angles from the observer. And you can see that the further the ship is away, the more of the hull is obscured by the curve. So, um, you want to? Have you seen that picture? I have not. No. Okay. Um, so I'm. I'm suggesting that this observation that anyone could make under similar circumstances would um, be observational uh, evidence for the, the curvature. It was a very clear day. There were no temperature inversions. There were no mirages. It was uh, very stable and um, relatively isothermal near the surface of the ocean. And so um, you can very clearly see that as these ships uh, as you look at the further away ones, you can see less of the ship as if, it's as if they're sinking, but they're just being obscured by a curve. Okay, and so my question would be, was this an experiment? Uh, is a picture that was taken. All right, but you seem to have had knowledge about temperature and... <clears throat> everything else about that day. So did someone take a picture and then write down all of this observational information so that they knew what height they were at, wow. they knew what distances these ships were at, they knew what temperature, they knew what, uh, you know, what the water temperature was, what the air temperature was, because you seem to have some pretty specific information, which would then seem to also support your interpretation that it's got nothing to do with atmospheric distortion. So that's why so, I was asking mm, if it was an experiment. Okay, sure. So um, whenever there's atmospheric distortion, you can see it. You'll get uh, um, these little curves, like at the edge of the boat, like it'll like disappear. 
like just a little piece of it, like there's a sliver missing. Also, it's very wavy and mirage-y. Uh, I'm saying that those optical effects were absent. Uh, it's obvious just from uh, initial inspection of the photograph. Uh, the distances to the ships uh, were obtained uh, through other techniques, uh, of which I am unaware at this time. And we've got the actual picture we're going to put up here in just a second, Travis, so you can actually see what he's um, what he's oh, talking cool, about. But yes, yeah, we'll send that to Dave, and then Dave will put it up. But you can go ahead and Dave has it. So we'll, we'll put that up, and then we'll let you um, see what you think, plain truth. Did anybody else get an echo? Yeah. Uh, do, does somebody have the uh, uh, Dr. Kroon or plain truth? Do you have the show pulled up? No. Watching it in a browser or something no. like that? I just have okay, it's gone I, I just have it pulled up. Okay. It's gone now. All right, uh, so we'll... Uh, you sent that to Dave, right, Steve? Yes, sir. Okay. There we go. All right. So there's the uh, – that is the one you were talking about, correct, Dr. Kroon? It is similar. It's similar. Same principle. This one should work. The other one was a little more clear, not as hazy, but I don't see any obvious uh, atmospheric um, disturbances or optical fit, edge effects and stuff. If you look where the – the hull meets the water for the the furthest one away. You would, you would, you'd see that edge effect. I'm not seeing it there. It's pretty, um, pretty clearly meeting the water. Same for the middle one, and of course the the closest one. You can see um, the whole hull. <laughs> so what's going on here? Plain truth. So I guess my 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 initial question would be, what's the distance to those ships? So. It looks like, is that black arrow that says 12 nautical miles? Is that what that means? This isn't the exact one that I was talking about, but it, um, it looks like they're they're trying to say 12 uh, miles for the one on the actually, left. I think it is. Actually, I think the arrows are observer height. Okay, 12 so, meters high. So it's a comparison between 12 meter height where you can see the hull of all the ships. Ah, right, on the bottom panel, yeah. On the bottom panel, and then at two meters high, observer height, the holes of the further ships are disappearing, and the water apparent behind the closest ship has disappeared, and it is actually towards the edge of the horizon, basically. It's at, right at, it's meeting it. Even so these are taken at different heights. The different heights, not different distances. Although the ships are okay. are apparently at different distances, mm-hmm. and right. I don't think the okay. distance to the ships is what's the what the question is. Because right. it's, it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter yeah. how far away the furthest ships is. It doesn't matter how much you zoom to that ship. You will never be able to get the bottom of that hole back into focus. Yeah. Okay. So th- that's a better. That's a well, better. Thank you, David. Um. So if you're standing at different heights, these these pictures were taken uh, from different heights, obviously. So w- what is your explanation for if we were on a flat Earth, why that would uh, give you such stark differences here? Yeah, again, I, I would disagree. I think that the distance to the ships is actually very important for us to understand what we're looking at. The issue with the viewer height <clears throat> is just an issue of perspective. Um, you know, we. I think that we've all observed things that if we <clears throat> lower our eyes to um, the ground level, we can only see a certain distance in front of us. And then if we stand up, we can see farther into the distance. That doesn't mean that we're seeing over the curve. That means that we are changing the angular view of our eyes ability to see into the distance. So if you've got a shorter view on the top frame, which is two miles or two meters, I don't know what that means. Is it two meters? <clears throat> and then you go up 12. Okay. So then if you, sim- if you then go up 10 more meters, you're now increasing the distance that your eye is able to resolve. Um, there are a lot of guys out there more, more uh, adept at being able to describe this than I. Um, good times for all is, uh, somebody who just put out some, uh, great, uh, videos on this very discussion. Good times for all. That's G U D T 
T-I-M-S, the number four, A-L-L, where he's describing this very thing. He's describing our eyes of 